My name is Amin Qureshi. I'm from Japan. My father's a Pakistani, my mom's a Japanese. I'm born and raised in Japan and I'm studying religion at Harvard. What inspired you to study religion? How did you take up this path? I did a master's in Japan first in, in sociology where I tried to understand the Muslims in Japan. But then I realized after you know, a while that I had certain questions in mind that I, I really had to tackle. And I felt that I had to get out. I did not necessarily think that I would have satisfying responses if I just stayed in the country. You have a Japanese mother and a Pakistani father. Obviously, there is a cultural difference. So how was it at home when you were growing up in Japan? In Japan, you don't really show your affection in the same way that, I guess, Pakistanis do. My father would be uh, very explicitly, intensely affectionate. So I would have different ways of interacting with my mom and, and my dad. And then I remember after I did my study abroad in Pakistan, I came back to Japan and I did the same hug to a Japanese. Uh, so uh, that, didn't, it wasn't, that didn't go uh, very well. <laughs> have you faced any difficulties as an immigrant child and a Muslim? I was born and raised in a city called Nagoya. It is one of the big cities, but it's not as international as, for example, Tokyo. Though my parents were, were pretty intentional, they made me go to schools that were somewhat international. I did have my own problems with identity and trying to make sense of who I am. I guess I did try to fit in. That's been the story of my life until a certain point, where I try to get rid of the foreignness uh, in me and try to become as Japanese, whatever that means, uh, as possible. I remember I, I stopped writing my last name because my last name was in katakana, which is a letter that we use for foreign things. And my name, Amin, was in kanji, which is used for Japanese things. But I, I do remember that I started just writing my first name and not my last name, and, and my teacher would uh, call me out on that. Do you think there are similarities between Japanese cultural teaching and what we have in Islam? There's a joke that you know, people make often. They say that the non-Muslim Japanese are more Muslim than, than the Muslims. What they mean by that is the level, level of their kind of akhlaq, you know, their decorum, their mannerism. They see something very Islamic about, about the Japanese people. It's a beautiful thing, but I, th I think it's also a problem for the Muslim community because for especially the second generation Muslims, they grow up in beautiful environments, right? They, they go to places that are fancy, well, you know, very clean, and tidy, but then they go to the mosques that are not, you know, smelly. It's, uh, you know, they might see like cockroaches <laughs> and so on. And even the Japanese people that they would interact with, they're much more comfortable being with them than they are uh, being with Muslims. That seriously, I guess, affects the process of trying to identify who they are and who they want to be in a, in a pretty serious way. When we say second generation in Japan, who are they? The second generation Muslims are basically the children of immigrants. A lot of them have um, a Japanese parent and, and an immigrant parent. For example, like me, you know, Japanese and Pakistani. When they go to school, they realize this uh, dichotomy, right? There's this, you know, Muslim environment at home. And then there's something that's completely different uh, at school. And they feel like they're being expected to be something very different. They're having a hard time trying to make sense of it as well. They don't know uh, what to do with this. So they question whether they're Muslim or Japanese. Many of them not realizing that that could, you know, it could be both. Just say this. The second generation Muslims really have no idea what Islam is, is, is about. And I'm not saying that I do, but even the, the basics that you would take for granted, I don't think they've been given an opportunity to even be exposed to that. Uh, when they have questions of an intellectual nature, there aren't many people that can explain and satisfy their doubts, either due to the language barrier or simply people aren't equipped. <laughs> Are they leaving Islam? There aren't many proper studies, but for example, someone said that, that we've lost 99% of our youth. Uh, whatever losing means, maybe that means, you know, a simple distancing from the Muslim community, maybe that also means actually distancing themselves from the faith uh, entirely. We don't know about the actual percentage, but it's, it's very noticeable. And it, it is probably one of the biggest challenges that the Muslim community in Japan is facing. I would say there's a huge knowledge factor and an environmental factor involved. The environmental factor is they don't have a Muslim community. They don't have Muslim friends and if they do, maybe they're not very fun to be with. But when we talk about uh, this phenomenon of uh, the second generation Muslims leaving Islam and whatnot, 
I, I, I don't agree with this um, approach uh, where people simply just criticize the Japanese society in general, you know, that they're uh, causing our children to leave Islam and whatnot. I, I would say, what are you doing? What's, what, what are the, uh, the, the, the first generation doing? A lot of the second generation Muslims, they would see things or hear things, uh, be told certain things from the, uh, the first generation Muslims and that can actually become a huge contributing factor of them starting to dislike the religion. I think there's a lot that the Muslim community has to do, um, there's a lot that we, we need to improve on and yeah inshallah it is it's slowly uh, I guess getting better. I'm also um, not someone that has just you know been born a Muslim and then everything's just uh, been butterflies and rainbows. There has been a lot of ups and downs. There was a moment in life, I guess when I was about 20 or so, where I intentionally made the choice that, okay, you know what, I am going to live as a Muslim, that this is going to be who I am from now on. So it was kind of like a conversion, um, I guess, experience. At what point did you decide to change? The huge, this powerful pull that happened for me was when I entered university and I met someone who was also half Japanese, half Pakistani. And he was a young guy, well-dressed, funny, and he was, he was this like really cool guy. The fact that he was cool and also Muslim at the same time, I mean, that was just, you know, that, that was a, a, a shock to me. Yeah, he, he just really pulled me to this direction. And I spent 20, 25 days out of Ramadan. He was in his house cooking together. So that was when this, yeah, my, my life seriously changed. How is Japanese people's perspective to religion? So if you open up a dictionary, religion is shukyo in Japanese, but it is not the same as deen, for example, in Arabic. The word shukyo comes with certain understandings of what religion is. There's a historical kind of development that led to that uh, understanding. Oftentimes, especially with religions like Islam, kind of, you know, religions that are not in indigenous to the country, they can be viewed in a not necessarily a positive way. So some people in Japan, they see religion as something very cultish, something very strange. For some people, it's divorced from kind of that spiritual, even the word spiritual is not necessarily positive. That beauty that we would see in religion, that might not exist in many, uh, you know, many people's uh, minds. It's a bit weird for you to say, you know what, I, I'm not going to do A, B and C, because I love Allah. Like that is like, wow, what are you doing? And when they say I'm a Buddhist or I'm a Shinto, it means quite a bit more than a simple statement that we would make. Like, you know, I'm a Muslim. It's more complicated than that. Why do you think Japanese Muslims come to Turkey? I've been in Istanbul for two months now. People here, even the foreigners, they talk, and you, you too. You have so much good things to say about this place, about this country. When I'm with people from the States or Japan, they have negative things to say about their country, maybe much more than the Turkish people and the foreigners living in Turkey or Turkey. <laughs> I've encountered a lot that are students of Islamic knowledge. Just being able to hear the adhan and a Muslim-friendly environment is something that seriously uh, appeals to their hearts. The fact that there are a lot of scholars here that they can benefit from, that's a huge plus as well, obviously. I've been meeting many academics here and something that they would say probably is, is that there is a certain level of freedom of speech on, on certain topics that perhaps you cannot uh, possibly talk about uh, in the West. You've been here for almost two months. How was your experience in Turkey? I might, I might actually feel at home here more than I ever will in Japan. You have a place here as, as Muslims. You have um, things you can do as a Muslim family. I, I went to a mosque the other day um, for Fajr. You know, you have all these like families and couples and whatnot. Like you can do that here. There's, there's a way of life as a Muslim who wants to be conscious, uh, be consciously Muslim. Just going to the shop and even that mosque on that day, I felt like I was, it really affected me. You know, I was uh, I kind of felt like I was about to cry. It feels like you're, you're very much part of society. You're not some random side dish that no one really wants. You belong here and you have your people and uh, yeah, you can live as a Muslim. Um, and and that's, that's amazing. <laughs>